Well, welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. I'm Clayton Chick and this is the outdoors. Outdoors, outdoors, outdoors. We are back fishing, of course. Pike fishing, I guess not we yet. Cindy's at the campground sleeping for a little bit longer, which is perfectly fine because I'm going to sneak out and I'm going to go start by throwing some swim baits. You guessed it, pike fishing today. All day I want to do pike. Got a beautiful glass calm right now. We're just literally going to just get at it. We're going to jump up front, trolling motor, everything set up there with the uh, bow seat, foot pedal. Got to throw my life jacket on yet. Took it off to get all rigged up and uh, yeah. Let's go fishing, let's go. Swim baits is the goal, but I've got top water, got bucktails, got glide baits. I've even got the fly rod today. I think if I pound a big fish early, I think I might switch to the fly rod. I think, maybe. Let's do it. Swim bait with that top hook should come through those weeds nice like of course you chuck it in the middle of like a pile of weeds it's not going to but for the most part it rides over weeds quite well honestly these like eight inch line through baits are some of my all-time favorite pike baits like all time there we go there we go okay lure works he ate it he ate it he ate it okay oh he spit it that's okay i got a bad hook set on him horrible it wasn't a giant I definitely have some confidence now that fish came up behind it and just hammered it. it kind of caught me off guard for a second, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, never got a good hook set on him at all. Okay, that's good news. Got confidence in the bait now. It's all getting some confidence. It's good. We're gonna try top water for a little bit. I had, I had a big follow not too long ago, like big follow. Glide bait could be maybe the answer too. They got carp, carp tailing it amongst all these weeds here. It's so cool. First cast. First cast, the fish blew up on me. Top water is going to be the answer for sure. Like three casts, two blow ups. Well, at least I know now what I can put Cindy on and go pike fishing. That first one. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. it's okay. It's smaller. The first blow up I've had was the biggest one so far. There we go. There we go. Trying to get out of these weeds here. Nice. Top water. Not very big. Spent all his energy hitting me and I was in the weeds. He's gonna jump right away. Come on, baby. Yeah, I saw that coming. Just trying to shake that hook. Awesome. Well, I know top water is gonna work because that's four strikes in no time. I know exactly what I'll be putting Cindy to when I take her out later. Top water. It's so cool to watch all these carp and amongst these weeds. Cool, 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 cool. Got the back hook. We'll just hand land you, buddy. Nope. Wouldn't even be upset if you spit the hook on me. Man, top water is literally one of the funnest ways to catch pike. Show them off quick. Nice fish, like a 30, I don't know, 31-ish, 32-ish, maybe something like that. Maybe a bit bigger. Whoa, okay, well, not the best release, but it's in the water. It's really at all that counts. So what I'm using here, you can tell it's been through a lot. It's beat up, 130 size Whopper Plopper. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below, River to Sea, probably my favorite all time topwater baits. They're unreal. I do change the hooks on them, or I did on this one. I believe the newer ones come with better hooks though these days. The old ones came with pretty flimsy hooks, but I believe they've changed that all. So 
went to a little bit smaller hook on the back just so it doesn't catch the tail a little bit bigger hook on the front you probably don't need the back hook just because sometimes it gets a little bit deeper in them but i'm pretty good at taking them out and it is barbless as well so awesome i can't tell you if there's anything more i love than topwater pike fishing well big lake trout giant walleyes okay there's lots i love it's just another thing it's like if you told me i had to fish for one species for the rest of my life i'd probably quit and just start hunting i like to i do like to change it up lots even though i've been doing lots of walleye on my channel lately i just been trying to get better at it i just love i just love changing it up i love if you want to become a really good angler in my mind you got to fish multi-species you gotta be able to adapt to different situations if you're just a one species angler you know just who cares don't focus on one species some people i realize are strapped maybe fish only one thing also got his bass kicking around but there are so many other options out there become a better angler learn how to cast both ways learn how to cast over your right shoulder learn how to cast over your left shoulder learn how to reel with your right hand learn how to reel with your left hand once you like become good at one thing start learning something else to become a really good angler and trust me i'm not a, i'm not an amazing angler either there's so many better anglers than me but the one thing i i can do is i'm pretty i'm pretty diverse you can put me in most situations and as long as I have a little bit of time, I'm probably going to figure something out at some point. Just, just the way I am. Just the way my mom and dad raised me. Oh, this is unreal. I'm so happy there's a topwater bite. Like, I'm going to probably go back earlier today at some point. I have a fish to cook up from yesterday. Two fish we're going to do. A catch and cook with the walleye one of my favorite little teriyaki dishes and then i'm going to pick up cindy and we are going to go pike fishing she's going to cast the top water and i'm going to cast everything else it's going to be awesome like right now <laughs> it's going through my mind is i want to learn how to catch these tailing carp on a fly rod i know they're super spooky like i haven't gotten very close to one yet but there's got to be a way Oh, I cast right in the weeds. Yes! <laughs> that one wasn't super aggressive. It just come up and slurped it. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's a it's a big walleye. Are you kidding me? No way. I just caught, a, is this how you catch big walleye like the prairies? Like what? What? Are you kidding me? This is a first. Got a new thing here now. Catch walleye on the top water at Lake of the Prairies apparently in the weeds. Apparently that's the thing. I wonder if I should be fishing jerk baits in shallow water or something like that for bigger fish. <laughs> <laughs> Like, just when you think you've seen it all, <laughs> the walleye ate a topwater bait. Like, really? Must be in here chasing minnows in the weeds. Well, you know your walleye are aggressive when. Okay, head camera died, so I think it's the perfect time to go try a new spot. It's been fun so far. There we go. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Nice. Nice. Nice fish, too. Nice fish, too. It's not hooked very good. It's not hooked very good. Just in the beak. And they're beak hooked like that, right in the nose. That's when they'll shake it most of the time. Keep the pressure to the outside if I can. Not pull too hard. Not a bad fish. Not a giant, but not a bad one. Another nice solid, like a nice, I don't know, 31, 
32 inch or something like that maybe 32 33 i don't know beautiful fish beautiful fish okay there she goes the old top water bite I can't tell you how much fun this is. We're going to go to a new spot, go look around a little bit. This isn't like catching pike up north. Don't get me wrong. I've caught in two pike this morning, a couple of blow-ups up north, northern Manitoba, Athapapascal, Reed Lake, Wacusco, all those lakes, you're going to catch a pile more fish, have a pile more fun. If you're going to actually really go target pike hard, go north. If you're going to, if you want to do some walleye fishing with a little bit of pike fishing, some of the southern lakes are awesome. Lake of the Prairies, Echo, Pasqua, Mission, Catepwa, Round Lake, Crooked Lake, Last Mountain Lake, Diefenbaker Lake, um, Tobin Lake. That's just on the Saskatchewan side. Obviously, there's a bunch over in Manitoba as well, but pike are so much fun to target, not gonna lie. They really are. It's a good change of pace. And like I said in my last video, have the proper tools. I'll roll that clip again right now. Okay, I said I was gonna cover tools. We'll cover it quick. Long needle nose pliers. These are kind of not quite a 45 degree angle here, but they're pretty handy. They're stainless steel. These are uh, offshore angler ones. I'll put the link in the description below. A good pair of hook cutters. Any musky, per man, a musky person will tell you to. Hook cutters, a file. And these I hardly use, but if you get a lure deep and you're not really familiar with how to take pike off, these right here will be jaw spreaders. And these ones got a nice curve on the outside of the mouth so it doesn't put any pressure and doesn't poke their poke their mouth type of thing or doesn't put a hole through it. So those ones work really good. I will put links to all of these. This I'm gonna get at Pokies for sure. The file comes from Thorn Brothers. This is from Nipex itself. And then this is, like I said, offshore angler. So four different places. Also, a big landing net if you're gonna take any pictures or measure a fish. And then I have a musky bump board there to measure the fish if I am going to do any measurements or stuff like that but for the most part if I'm going to do pictures with the fish or measure them they're going to be in that landing net for sure I'm not going to let them flop in the bottom of the boat back at the campsite the last couple spots were uh, no fish I uh, had one one follow a couple swipes at the top water but uh, no dice it's all good though, because we're going to use the fire pit and we are going to cook up one of my little favorite walleye dishes, pike dishes, actually even better probably. But I have walleye from last video that we're gonna use. First, we're gonna cook Cindy up some fries and some chicken strips, and then I'm gonna cook the fish. Some people ask how come no walleye in that one video and we did chicken strips. Cindy doesn't eat fish and well, I'm not gonna make her obviously, so we cooked her chicken strips. So we're gonna do that today. French fries, chicken strips, and then I will do my little catch and cook. Beautiful, beautiful day. I gotta get out of this hoodie soon. Even I gotta get out of this hoodie. Time to cook. I'm gonna wear the helmet cam for this one so I can talk a little as I'm cooking. Little Chinese, it actually works better for pike I find, but a little like a little Chinese walleye dish, pike dish. It's something we just came up with up north experimenting for shore lunches. So this is what we got going on. We got here, we got our walleye. This, this is the ingredients we'll need, I should say. Walleye chunks, sliced onion, a sweet chili sauce. There's a bunch of different kinds. This one's a Frank's. A honey garlic or a teriyaki works really good. Frank's, canola oil, and flour. I'm cooking up Cindy's chicken right now. I'm actually gonna pull it off for a little bit here. For anybody who wants to see this recipe, for the chicken recipe, it's in a couple videos prior where I did the chicken and homemade french fries. So that will be in the previous, a couple previous videos a little while ago or whatever. But like I said, sweet chili, honey garlic or teriyaki, franks, canola oil, flour, butter, and pineapple. What we'll do first is We'll take the fish, we'll put it in this bag with a little bit of Frank's. Just a little bit, not a lot. And shake that up. And what you'll do with this right here, this fish and Frank's, is just before you put in the oil, you're gonna coat it in flour. 
Don't do it too early. It'll turn into a goopy mess and use lots of flour. It'll also turn into a goopy mess, but wait until your oil's almost ready to put it in. We have to wait till our chicken's finished cooking. I'm gonna put it back on the heat. I don't have a thermometer or whatever. I just can tell usually from years of experience kind of how hot the oil is. All this I won't know exactly, but it doesn't have to be exact. And like I said, these are the homemade chicken strips. They're made out of chicken breast that I'm making for Cindy. And then when these are done, we'll go on with the fish. Okay, I notice that chicken is just almost finishing up, so I'm gonna take my flour and dump it in the bag here. Like I said, a good amount. You wanna make sure you coat everything quite well. Shake it up here. And I'm gonna pull that chicken off, put the fish in, put our chunks of fish in. The reason for the chunks, you wanna get everything pretty crispy. Cause if it's not crispy, it'll fall apart. So good, hot heat, and get those chunks, cook them up quick, you get them crispy. Okay, so after those are finished, you're gonna pull that out and dump that oil. And then we're going to do a saute with the onions. A saute means on the oil or on the in the pan with a little bit of butter, lots of heat and we're gonna saute those puppies up. Those are done, pulling them off, and then I'm gonna get rid of the oil. Look how nice and crispy those little chunks are. Perfect. A little bit of flour, a little bit of Frank's Red Hot. You don't need egg wash or any of that stuff. You can even put just a little bit of water in there in the flour, to be honest, too. Just get those fillets or that fish just a little bit wet. Not crazy wet, just down. Okay, so we have our empty pan and take a little bit of butter this is for the onions so toss it in there there's also some oil left in there which is perfectly fine heat that up a little bit first okay as it's heating up grab our onions and saute those puppies up in a little flippy okay our onions got a little bit of a saute going there Pull them off for a minute. Grab your fish that you cooked, dump it in with those onions. I'm gonna grab a little bit of sweet chili sauce here. Put it on the top. All depends how much fish you have is how much you're gonna use, basically. And grab a little bit of the honey garlic. Like I said, teriyaki works really well too. And same thing, all depends how much fish you have, depends on how much you use. So when everything coated, okay? And then after everything's in there, you're gonna put it back on the heat, your onions. You're gonna flip them up and caramelize them there. Little walleye bites right there. Walleye bites. A little bit of pineapple mixed in. Again, I'm not gonna use the whole can because I only have one fish in there. I'm not gonna overpower the fish. We're gonna heat it up again. Couple, couple tosses, and we are good to go. Walla, walleye bites. You can throw some green peppers in there or red pepper or something like that if you wanted to. You can really get creative, but that is one walleye, onions, pineapple. Like I said, Cindy's having the chicken and the French fries. We will basically eat this up clean everything up, and then go fishing. Walleye bites, little recipe for walleye bites. We are back on the water. Cindy's all comfy down there. I offer her a chair all the time, but she'd rather sit on the floor. Hey, whatever, I do what I can do. She has to choose her own. But we are headed pike fishing and walleye fishing. We'll uh, mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna explore some new areas, fish some areas I already fished before. Sydney's gonna throw top water for pike. I'm gonna throw whatever else, maybe a line through me. Actually, no, probably a glide bait. I think I'm gonna throw a glide bait. And then we'll do some walleye fishing as well. She won the bet last night. She hasn't tried to have another bet today. So we'll see what happens if she does or not. But we got a little bit of a boat ride. So let's do it. Oh, got him. <laughs> see, there's fish here. Not a big one. You wanna touch them? It's 
hot out, isn't it? Okay, well, we started our afternoon off with a little guy that I'm gonna clip right by the boat here. There you go, see you buddy. I'm using the glide bait, shine glide, savage gear. I slammed three pike over 44 inches a couple years ago with this thing in one afternoon. And Cindy's got on the top water. She's just fishing casually whenever she wants to fish. She's here to relax. I'm here to fish. Got him. Got, a, got another one. I don't know if it's the same one, hun, but. <laughs> a little bit bigger than the first one. That's two fish pretty quick, though. A little bigger, eh? Hey? <laughs> He's not happy. It's okay, I don't have to deal with him. It's way better this way. Oh. <laughs> it's a walleye. Unreal. This is so crazy. This morning a walleye on top water and now a big walleye on it. This is insane. I have maybe figured out, found a way to catch bigger walleye here. <laughs> That's insane. This morning I caught one on the top water. I just had a big walleye follow me on last cast and now I hook one. That's crazy. This morning, walleye on the top water and now on the glide bait. Life's good. <laughs> Those are pretty nice walleyes too. Well, the pike fishing died off. You could say almost completely. There's better lighting. Look at the sun has set behind the trees. But the pike fishing died off for us. I caught one more small guy here at the end of the night as we were kind of just fooling around. But Cindy put a lick in on some walleyes, mostly little guys, but a couple nice ones. We did a little bit driving around. Look how silly it looks with the head camera there right now. I'll take that off. Look at that nice sunglass tan too. Somebody's gonna put in the comments, your face is burnt. I always look this way. It's all good. It's not burnt. But yeah, like I said, we caught a couple fish into the evening. We mostly kept the cameras off for the most part though. And look at that. Another one as literally as I'm wrapping this up. So I am gonna go take that fish off, but that'll be the end of this video. I'm gonna to fish tomorrow yet though. I don't know whether Cindy is or not, it's up to her. So as always, she said it really quietly, but get, get out, outside. get outside. <laughs>